Sometimes, when you're reading Islam's most trusted sources, you get the impression that it's a bunch of idiotic nonsense. Like when you read that stars are missiles that Allah uses to shoot demons, or that the sun sets in a muddy pool, or that Satan hides in your nose, or that most of the punishment of the grave is for urinating improperly. Other times, you get the impression that Islam is just a system that Muhammad came up with to satisfy his sexual urges, like when he received a revelation telling him to have sex with a prepubescent girl, or when he received a revelation telling him to have sex with his slave girls, or when he received a revelation telling him that even though all other Muslims were limited to four wives, he could have as many as he wanted. Still other times, you get the impression that something completely demonic is at work, like when Muhammad first started receiving revelations and he thought that he was demon-possessed, or when he delivered the infamous satanic verses, or when he claimed that he was a victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. When we read moronic stories about Muhammad telling his followers to drink camel urine, or perverted revelations commanding Muhammad to take the wife of his own adopted son, Islam sounds like it came from the mind of an illiterate, superstitious, shooting stars. Man. All his missiles to scare the jinns? Don't forget to subscribe because it's time to fight back. And ring that bell for all the time also. I will wait. Let's start. This video is in response to David Wood, Shooting Stars, Allah's Missiles to Scare the Jinns, which can be accessed here. David Wood said, Muhammad just as his Bedouin contemporaries had a strange belief in shadowy beings and ghosts that he called jinn. These jinns were made of fire and would stand on top of each other's shoulders all the way to heaven to eavesdrop to what was being discussed. But the most amusing part is that the Prophet believed that the shooting stars and the meteors are the missiles thrown at the eavesdropping jinns. Quran. 72-8, and, the jinn who had listened to the Quran said. We had sought the heaven but had found it filled with strong warders and meteors. 9. And we used to sit on places, high, therein to listen. But he who listeneth now findeth a flame and wait for him. He repeated the same absurd idea again. Quran. 37. 6 tenths, we have indeed decked the lower heaven with beauty, in, the stars, for beauty, and for guard against all obstinate rebellious evil spirits, so, they should not strain their ears in the direction of the exalted assembly but be cast away from every side, repulsed, for they are under a perpetual penalty, except such as snatch away something by stealth, and they are pursued by a flaming fire, of piercing brightness. And Quran. 67 to 5, and we have, from of old, adorned the lowest heaven with lamps, and we have made such, lamps, as, missiles to drive away the evil ones, and have prepared for them the penalty of the blazing fire. The universe as was envisioned by Muhammad, obviously belongs to the realm of fairy tales. The earth for him was flat where the sun rises from one end and sets in the muddy waters on the other. In Arabic the word, Sama, stands for both heaven and sky. And for Muhammad, just like his primitive contemporaries there was no distinction between the two. He described the heaven, sky, made of seven layers and placed the stars in the lowest layer, lower than the moon. Then he envisioned the mythical jinns as if they were real beings, standing on each other's shoulders all the way to heaven to eavesdrop to the discussion of the exalted assembly. He assumed that the stars are just lamps to adorn the lower heaven that are also used as missiles to shoot the intruding jinns. Can any reasonable person today accept these fables of those primitive people as true? The shooting stars, despite their names are not stars but meteorites that glow when enter the atmosphere of the earth. But Muhammad, could not see the difference, to him the shooting stars were stars. As absurd as it may be, today's Muslims still believe in the jinns. It is written in Quran and for them the Quran is the word of Allah. How can it be wrong? There is also a hadith that confirms the above story. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 54, Number 432 narrated, Aisha. I heard Allah's Apostle saying, The angels descend, the clouds and mention this or that matter decreed in the heaven. The devils listen stealthily to such a matter, come down to inspire the soothsayers with it, and the latter would add to it one hundred lies of their own. A similar hadith is reported in Sahih Bukhari Volume 9, Book 93.
Number 650 Muslim response Ali Sina needs to provide a reference either from the authentic hadith or from the glorious Quran regarding his assertion that the Islamic sources state that jinns stand on each other's shoulders. Secondly, this is all just a matter of faith. Again, like I mentioned in my previous articles, because Ali Sina is an anti-supernaturalist, he does not believe in the existence of jinn and he finds the whole notion of it ridiculous. Well, that is only his opinion and his opinion is irrelevant. He fails to show any scientific errors in the Islamic texts. The Quran mentions nothing about shooting stars. That is only his erroneous assumption. However, stars do move. Check here. HTTP colon slash slash www.astronomycafe.net slash kadir slash q181.html Also here HTTP colon slash slash curious.astro.cornell.edu slash question dot php question mark number equals 378 If stars are moving, then can't the stars be used as missiles to drive away the jinn? Again, this is only an issue of faith. Sahih Bukhari Volume 4, Book 54, Number 432 Narrated, Aisha. I heard Allah's Apostle saying, The angels descend, the clouds and mention this or that matter decreed in the heaven. The devils listen stealthily to such a matter, come down to inspire the soothsayers with it, and the latter would add to it one hundred lies of their own. A similar hadith is reported in Sahih Bukhari Volume 9, Book 93. Number 650 David Wood needs to provide a reference either from the authentic hadith or from the glorious Quran regarding his assertion that the Islamic sources state that jinns stand on each other's shoulders. Secondly, this is all just a matter of faith. Again, like I mentioned in my previous articles, because, David Wood is an anti-supernaturalist, he does not believe in the existence of jinn and he finds the whole notion of it ridiculous. Well, that is only his opinion and his opinion is irrelevant. He fails to show any scientific errors in the Islamic texts. The Quran mentions nothing about shooting stars. That is only his erroneous assumption. However, stars do move.